Now I'm welcoming His Excellency Vice President of India, Mr. Venkaya Naidu, to say his welcoming address. Excellency Mr. Pegadis Levitz, Honorable President of Latvia, Excellency Mr. Rolf Nemiro, Minister of Economics, Mr. Sanjay Dhotre, Honorable Minister of State from India, and uh, members of uh, Parliament who are part of my delegation, His Excellency Ambassador Artis Betteris of Latvia to India, Mr. Andris uh, Ojeles, Director of the Latvian Investment and Development Agency, and Mr. Ashish Sharaf from Asocham, uh, leading uh, Indian business delegation. Ambassador Monica Kapil Mohta to Lat Latvia and Sweden, distinguished guests, business and industry leaders, my dear brothers and sisters. It's a matter of great pleasure an honor for me and my delegation to be here in this great and beautiful country and to have the opportunity to be with you all. On behalf of my delegation and on my own behalf, I express my gratitude to the warm welcome and hospitality extended to us, making our stay here more comfortable. Earlier in the day, I have had very cordial and useful meetings with His Excellency, the President, and also His Excellency, the Prime Minister, we have shared our common desire to strengthen bilateral economic and trade relations. On the economic front, it has been noted that there is tremendous scope to boost our trade and investments. We have agreed to work together with the zeal and vigor to fortify this relationship. I would like to compliment the Latvian Investment and Development Agency and other agencies for organizing the India Latvia Business Forum. This forum is intended to encourage our business to explore opportunities in both the markets. I would also like to congratulate Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and Asocham for taking up initiative to sign the Memorandum of Understanding to enhance cooperation between the two chambers. I am sure this MOU will go a long way in strengthening our bilateral trade and investments. I wish to thank all the business and industry champions who have all gathered here. I thank you all for participating in this day-long meaningful dialogue. Uh, Honorable Ambassador was telling me that uh, you people had a very meaningful and purposeful meeting and deliberations. I do hope that many initial negotiations will develop into successful business ventures. Please. Uh, accept my best wishes. Distinguished delegates, India and Latvia share a warm and friendly relationship based on common commitment to freedom and democracy and to a peaceful world order. We have convergence of views on many bilateral and multilateral issues. Latvia's accession to the European Union and its investor-friendly investor policies have resulted in Latvia emerging as one of the fastest growing members of the Eurozone. I congratulate the government and the people of the Republic of Latvia on their achievements transforming the country's economy over the past 30 years. Let me share some good news from India as well. India today is among the fastest growing large economies of the world with low inflation. Literally, it's one point and dot. And uh, highest foreign investments controlled fiscal deficit, growing foreign exchange reserve, and reforms in business and finance sectors. We are all, we, we are at present US dollar 2.7 trillion economy, and by the year 2024 and 25, it is expected to be a US dollar 5 trillion economy. India labor force is expected to touch 160 to 170 million by 2020 according to a study by Asocham and Thought Arbitrage Research Institute. India is on track to achieve upper middle class income status in the back of digitization. Favorable demographics and reforms 
the government of india has undertaken aggressive economic reforms and introduced many flagship initiatives like uh, make in india smart cities digital india green india startup india among others that present immense opportunities for latvian business doing business in india is not only lucrative to investors but also becoming simpler india's ranking in the world bank's ease of doing business index has improved from 142 in 2014 to 77 this year with the implementation of the gst good service tax the concept of one country one tax one market has become a reality the foreign direct investment equity inflows into india 2018-19 stood at us dollar 44.37 billion india is among the countries with the largest production of energy from renewable resources as of june 30 2019 india has an installed renewable energy capacity of 80.47 gigawatts of which solar and wind comprises 29.55 gigawatts and 36.37 gigawatts respectively biomass and small hydropower constitute 9.81 gigawatts and 4.6 gigawatts respectively thus india offers one of the largest investment opportunities in the renewable space the government of india allows 100 percent fdi under the automatic route for projects of renewable power generation and distribution we are focusing on our making our growth inclusive and sustainable guided by the india's commitment to a healthy planet and our nationally determined contribution as per the paris accord on climate change we have pledged by 2030 40 percent of the installed power generation capacity shall be based on green sources we aim to increase our capacity to 175 gigawatts of renewable energy capacity by 2022 our initiative on the international solar alliance will enable india to be a pioneer in moving towards a green global economy as the world's economy progress towards fourth industrial revolution where it high tech artificial intelligence and innovation will play key roles that we are and india can work together for mutual gains it is heartening to note that the bilateral trade between india and that we stands at us dollar 273.97 million in 1819 which i believe is not is a, is a lot below our ex existing potential there is a lot of scope for both of us to work together and move forward that we as geo strategic location along with all weather ports offer excellent infrastructure and opportunities in facilitating trade i am quite hopeful that the companies in our countries would contribute further towards the economic prosperity of both of our countries there is immense scope for collaboration by way of technology transfer and investment in areas like pharmaceuticals in healthcare telecommunication it and software development heavy engineering and biotechnology among others we would be happy to see a high level participation from latvia in the india europe 29 business forum i sincerely hope that our business ties will become a strong pillar of our bilateral relations and the business leaders of both the countries will work together to create wealth employment and enhance the quality of life in each of our countries i wish you all the best in your deliberations today and also the conclusion that you are going to arrive at and as well as the continuing dialogue and collaboration you are going to be engaged in through the next few years to come thank you very much namaskar jai hind